Originally released in 2014, Dark Souls 2 is the follow-up to one of the greatest games of all time. You can imagine that those are some pretty deep shoes to fill and so, this game remains a hugely controversial talking point amongst fans of the series. People tend to either love it or hate it, with no room for the middle ground, and so I can recognise the glass podium from which I speak. Whatever your view may be, it's indisputable that Dark Souls 2 has played a vital role in shaping the franchise as a whole. However, I think that a lot of people currently overlook it as just a game to skip past. Yeet. Early on, this game feels very unstable. Where Dark Souls 1 felt heavy and robust, Dark Souls 2 instead feels slippery and imprecise. See, that hit me. This is in large part due to the new adaptability skill, which starts you off with reduced invincibility frames. Rolling through an attack usually prevents you from taking damage, but having fewer iframes means that your window for successfully timing a roll is substantially more narrow. Okay, well, there goes 2,000 souls. People coming over from the previous game Ouch. would especially notice this difference. How'd that hit me? And I believe that it's the main reason why players initially become frustrated with Dark Souls 2. Okay, so I hate this game, and it's bullshit. That being said, it's not the only reason why this game can sometimes feel unstable. Just kill me. Seriously? Seriously. Iframes aside, there are often times where I felt like I was being hit when I shouldn't have been. Hit detection for enemies felt off, and I constantly questioned why my attacks weren't being registered. Additionally, there are inner mechanisms here that just generally overcomplicate and hamper on your experience. Yay. Like for example, how spears do reduce damage if an enemy is closer to you. How did that second attack not kill him? With all these conflicting ideas, it gets harder to troubleshoot what's going wrong in any given oh. situation. What was that? You may be too close, using the wrong damage type, maybe you're not attacking it in the right spot, could also be the timing, or perhaps the game's just being weird today. Oh. It's not always so straightforward, so while this system offers greater depth for experienced and well-informed players, it serves to alienate the newcomers, uh -oh. which again, fosters the love or hate duality that this game's become known for. I hate you so much. Unlike in Dark Souls Remastered, the ability oh. to teleport between bonfires is unlocked straight away, which for this game is pretty much a necessity as there are multiple directions to teleport back and forth between. I remember this place. I personally don't feel like this does the game any favours as it makes the player doubtful whether or not they're going in the right direction. Try and figure out where I need to go next. While you can technically go anywhere, an understanding for how difficult each area is will dictate the path you take and when you tread it. Oh immediately got backstabbed. For example, you initially want to go through the forest of fallen giants because when compared to dying down a well Ooh, okay. or struggling against the hide knights, how was it? Whatever. It certainly seems to be the more doable option. <laughs> After defeating the pursuer, boom, you're out of there, see ya. You'll likely find this nest that can fly you over to a completely new section of the game called the Lost Bastille. Now you might presume that this is the game's way of directly taking you to where you need to go next, but actually no, that's completely wrong. How did that not connect? Oh, okay. This path is entirely optional, with an area boss that you'll at this stage be underleveled for. And despite being guided here, you are actually supposed to teleport back to Medulla and go in the complete opposite direction towards Hyde's Tower of Flame. This isn't the only instance where you might get confused. At some point, this NPC appears, providing the means to progress and travel to the Iron Keep, which is great, but was never explained, nor had any indication towards. Proceed. Bearer of the curse. And also, while inside Drangleic Castle, there's this golem statue that you're supposed to kill an enemy in front of for it to open up the way to progress. By the way, there are no enemies in this room. You're supposed to bring an enemy over to it that spawns in the next room. Because why on earth would I ever think that proceeding through both doors and dealing with the annoying horse mini boss would lead me to anything other than a door that never opens? I could go on with more examples, but I think you get the point. Okay, why did it make me lose my target lock? I can't recommend enough for you to play this game with a guide open as, especially towards the late game, you'll need to travel around a lot to unlock the true ending. I've talked a lot about how confusing and unstable this game can be. While you're starting out, all of these options are daunting, and with so many things to learn, it can be really off-putting, especially to those that are already familiar with the other games of this franchise. However, if you're someone who's agreed with every point I've made so far, then let me at least reassure you that if there's any Souls game worth bearing these kinds of issues for, 
it's Dark Souls 2. Without a doubt, it has the most rewarding end game featuring content that will take you many hours to complete. There are loads of secrets here, and I really appreciated the references back to Dark Souls 1 with the optional gargoyle boss fight and familiar looking old dragon slayer. The true final boss is a secret, which unlocks an entirely new ending, and with the additional three DLC packs, I know that there's a lot more enjoyment to be had from this installation of the series. 